Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing T-Tests. Now this is a statistics topic. There's various kinds of tests that we use in statistics and the T-Test is one of them. Um, I'll explain what the T-Test is in a moment, but perhaps just to give you a little bit of history, the T-Test was invented by a guy called William Gossett. Now about a hundred years ago he used to work for Guinness in Ireland, the people who make the beer and he would do various statistical tests on the beer process to see whether or not a change in what they were doing would give them better beer. What do I mean? Let me give you an example. So let's imagine that uh, you want to have a bigger head on your beer. I don't really know what makes better beer. I'm not a beer drinker, but imagine you want to get a bigger head and so you change the manufacturing process in some way. Maybe you throw in some more hops or something and then you measure to see if there's any kind of difference. So this will be the size of the head. Uh, head size. And maybe for your first group where you add the extra hops, you measure the average, the mean size of the head on the beer when you pour it out and it turns out to be that much. We'll call this group number one. This is where you've added the extra hops. And then you need a control group, something to compare it with. Um, that's the original process where you didn't add the extra hops. And maybe that in this group, the mean turns out to be less in group number two, our control group, than it was in the first one. So you think, oh great, adding the extra hops seems to give you a bigger head. But maybe it doesn't. Maybe you were just lucky because We've done this a bunch of times, yet we haven't just poured one glass of beer. you poured lots of different glasses of beer and you want to see which has the biggest head. But this is the mean height of the head on the beer. And the actual spread of the data might have been something like this. So you have a whole different set of points here because we've taken the mean. You have the height of this bar that I've drawn is the mean height. And then maybe on the other group as well, some pints of beer when you poured them gave a really big height and some of them not so much and so you get this spread of data and you work out the average and we compare the average but if they're very spread out like this then who's to say that really this process the new process was better than the old one because quite a few of the points in the old process were actually higher I give you a bigger head of beer than in the old one because they're so spread out, it's hard to know, has this really made a difference or was I just lucky with some of these and ended up getting a really big head of beer or something. Now, William Gossett, as I say, spent his time trying to solve this kind of problem and I'll tell you exactly how we solve it in a moment. But he published his results uh, at a time when the company said, you, if you work for us as a statistician trying to improve the beer, you're not allowed to publish your results. So he had to publish his results secretly and he used a pseudonym and the pseudonym was student. Bit of an odd pseudonym I know, but he just called himself student and so it came to be known as the student's t-test. Not because it's the t-test used by students, but because that was the pseudonym of the guy who actually published it originally because he wanted to keep his identity secret as I say. Interesting. Anyway, back to the maths. The t-test, which student came up with, allows you to compare the means of two groups. So like in this example here, if we're talking about the mean height of the head on the beer. So the mean height of this one is bigger than this one, but is there actually a real difference? In descriptive statistics, you just compare, in this case, the two means, and you say, ah oh, yes, this one is bigger than that one. But that doesn't tell you anything about the general population. We've just taken a sample, you know, maybe we've poured 30 pints of beer from one set here and 30 from here, and we've compared them. But what about all of the process? If you did it a thousand times, would there actually be a difference? And in inferential statistics, we try and make a prediction about, based on this data from our sample, whether or not this will always be true. Now you can never be 100% confident. And so the whole topic here revolves around hypothesis testing. So I'm gonna assume you're familiar with the general concepts of hypothesis testing, but just to remind you, you always have some null hypothesis 
which we tend to call H0. And that means that there's no change or no connection or what you were trying to achieve didn't make a difference, essentially. So in this case, H0 would be the fact that the improved, the new process, or rather, of making the beer didn't give you any change in the head size. Okay, so no change. And then you always have the alternative hypothesis, which is what you're sort of trying to prove, which is that there is a change, that the new process gives you a bigger head size. So in this case, bigger head. <clears throat> but generally, uh, like with the normal distribution, if you're hypothesis testing, you postulate some hypothesis, you do the test, you work out the statistics, so it might be the Z or Z statistic, um, if you're using a normal distribution, and you compare it with different confidence levels to see whether or not you have enough evidence to accept the alternative hypothesis, or whether or not you need, whether or not you need to stick with the null hypothesis, which says actually it didn't really make any difference. This was the change was just due to chance. So that's the general idea, which is what we'll be using this for. But specifically for a t-test, your hypothesis is comparing the means. That's what you're doing here. So is this mean higher than this one? Now, in general, the t value or t statistic, I'm not going to give you the detailed maths in this video, we'll do that in another one, I'll explain that in a minute, is the difference between the means, that will be the sort of descriptive, okay, this mean is bigger than this one. So on the top of this, it's going to be a fraction. We've got the difference between the means and that's divided by the variance of the samples. Now the variance is how spread out it is, each of the samples. It takes account of both variances for the two samples. So it's the divided by the variance or standard deviation you could say of the samples. So for a t-test you always take two samples with a mean and you're comparing the means. So it's the difference between the means divided by the variance of the samples. And there are different ways, different kinds of t-tests that you can do, which I'll talk about in a minute, but that's the general principle. So if the difference between the means compared with the spread of the data is small, you're going to get a small t-value, which means there isn't really much difference. It was just fluke or luck, if you like. But if you have a big difference between the means and the variance is small, then you're going to get a big t-value. Yep, small number on the bottom of the fraction means big t-value. And so that means there is a difference. So if I give you a, if I, we change the variance, obviously the variance for these two ones I've done here is very spread out. So you can't really conclude that the new manufacturing process um, has actually improved the beer in any way. But if we had, so the same means here, but now it's much, the variances are much smaller. So imagine you had a set of data like that, and like this. You can see in that case, ah, almost all the points here are above the points here. So it probably is reasonable to conclude that the new manufacturing process has made a difference, has increased the head size of the beer in this case. So that's what this gives you. A big T value means a big difference compared with the spread of the data. Small t value means either the data was very spread or there wasn't much difference between them. Either way, you can't conclude there's a change. You would accept the null hypothesis in that case. No difference, no change by your new manufacturing process. So that's the T statistic or T test in general. That's what it does. Now, there are three different T tests, um, different ways you can do the T test. And I've given the details of how you do these three tests in three different videos. So um, let me just rub this out and we'll talk about the three different kinds of t-test you can do. But as I say, I'm going to go through a specific example of each one in a separate video so you can see exactly how it's done. So if you know exactly which kind of t-test you need to do, you can just go straight to that video and watch that one. Okay, so first up, the first kind of t-test you can have is a paired, or sometimes it's called matched or dependent test. So it's when you've got paired data, matched data, or dependent data. What does that mean? 
Well, imagine you've got a set of patients and you want to see, you want to test a new drug to see if it works. So if you take these patients and you measure their cholesterol levels or whatever it is you want to test before you give them the drug, then you give them the drug, which is supposed to reduce their cholesterol or do something that's going to help them, and then you measure their cholesterol levels after you've given them the drug. Now that would be a paired or matched or dependent t-test you would need to use there because the two before and after situations are dependent. You've got the same patient before they take the drug and after they take the drug that's being tested in this case. Um, and the data is naturally paired in the sense that you have a before and after for each pair, for each patient. So you've got a pair of data points. So a before and after, as I say, for each patient. So that would be paired data. The second kind of t-test you can do then would be the unpaired or unmatched or independent t-test. And that's where, imagine you had two different groups of patients. So again, you're going to test this drug to reduce cholesterol. But in the first group, you give them the drug and you just see, you measure their cholesterol levels. And in the second group, it's a control group. So you give them a placebo that doesn't do anything. They just think they're getting the real drug. And then you compare the two results. But because it's, they're not dependent on each other, each of, the dependence is, each of the patients is different. In that case, it's a, they're, well, they're independent. It's unmatched or unpaired. You can't naturally pick one patient and pair them with another one. So that's the second kind of t-test you can do. And the last kind, the third kind, is the one sample t-test. So that's if you have a known average or known mean and you want to compare your group with the known mean. So for example, if you were the coach of a basketball team in the NBA, let's say, and you wanted to compare the heights of your basketball team with everyone else to see if your basketball players were taller than average, well, you can find the average, the mean height of all the players on the, in the NBA and that would then be a known mean. And so you'd compare each of your basketball players, the mean height of your sample, with the known mean of all the players in the NBA. So that's where you use a one sample t-test. So those are the three different types, and as I say, I've done three different videos, one for each of the types, where I'll go through a specific example and show you exactly how to work out the t-statistic, and then how to do the hypothesis testing to compare whether or not it's, uh, there is an actual difference between the means or not. But in all three cases, you're basically comparing two means. Just like with the beer, you want to see if one is bigger or different from the other one. Okay, finally then, so those are the three different types, there are some assumptions that you should be aware of with the t-test. And if you break these, then it can all go horribly wrong and your data can be pretty much meaningless. So the first one you should be aware of is you need a reasonable sample size. So if you haven't got enough um, data points in your sample, then it's not going to work. Now, so like it, patients, if you only tested three patients with your drug and three patients in the control group, you're not going to get any meaningful conclusions. Typically, you want at least 20 data points in each sample, 20 people if it's patients with a drug or whatever it is. Uh, ideally, you want at least 30, but definitely at least 20. So if the sample size is too small, the t-test just won't work. It won't tell you reliably whether or not there is a difference between the means. Secondly, then, you need normal-ish distributions. So the normal distributions, often when you get the nice bell curve, they don't have to be perfect normal distributions, the two samples that you take, but they should be approximately normal. Effectively, the less normal they become, the less reliable your results will be. So if they're about normal, then it's fine. You can accept the results. And the last one, then, you need roughly the same sample size groups. So if you've got 28 patients in your getting the drug group and 31 patients in your control group who are getting placebo, then that will be okay because they're roughly the same. But if you've got 30 patients in one group and five patients in the other group, that's no good. It's going to give you very dodgy results. So they don't need to be exactly the same, but they just need to be roughly the same, the two sample sizes for the two means that you're comparing. All right. Hopefully that's given you a good overview of what the t-test is and how you use it. As I say, I've done separate videos for the individual ones, so if you want to know how to do a paired or dependent test, go and watch that video, and I'll explain all the details with the calculations. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths.